My name is Leslie Brathwaite. I'm a mix engineer. Some of the people I've worked with over the years include Outkast, Cardi B, Beyonce, Jay-Z, of course Pharrell. Certainly worked with Lil Uzi Vert. I've mixed pretty much most of his records, most of his hits. Had the opportunity to mix Exo Tour Life and Money Longer and a few other of his big hits. In the case of Neon Guts, Pharrell produced it in LA. When he is talking to me about what he's looking for from a track, he often uses colors and textures as a way to describe it. Neon Guts kind of is self-explanatory. You know, you want it to kind of feel organic, feel bright, feel fluid, and kind of like neon. So in this particular session, I'll go through a little bit of my workflow and how I kind of approach things and my thought process as to what plugins I use, how I approach the music and the sound and what I'm trying to accomplish. So I will start off and just play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a colorful aura. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. So each individual vocal track. A question I get a lot is, is it cheating to use the waves tune on every track? I think what happens is people confuse the function of plugins like this. And it's not cheating. It's trying to achieve a certain sound. In this particular song, they are going for a slightly futuristic, robotic kind of sound on the vocals, but not too heavy. It's not, you know, it's not going super robotic. It's just enough to kind of give it a little bit of flavor of futuristic, and you want it on every vocal, and it's, it's, a, it's about consistency. The other question I get is, well, why would you use something called a waves tune or something that's used for tuning on tracks that don't even have specifically singing on them. And we'll explore that right now. And a lot of it is the texture. A lot of it, 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 even though when you're talking, you still have some melodic quality to, your, to what you're saying. And the Waves tune can kind of throw some of those notes around to give it that same feel of futuristic, slightly robotic. Ah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shoulder. You can hear some of the melodic quality when he says, um, out of my shooter. And, and, and it kind of, it does the same thing with the note transition in his words to where... Uh, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shooter. Flood in my chain and it... So it, it still um, has the effect. It still overall encompasses the effect of that futuristic, slightly robotic sound. Uh, it has a texture and a tone to it. And, and it, it works. And it's one of those things where... You're trying to create consistency over all of the tracks, and that's why I use it on, you know, almost every vocal track in the song. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shooter. Flooding my chain and it Gucci. I don't want that girl, she moody. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shooter. Flooding my chain and it Gucci. I don't want that girl, she moody. It's always helpful to know the key of the song or the key that you're trying to achieve the tuning in. In this particular song, it's B minor. You know, I select right here, B, natural minor. And then you kind of get to play with some of the parameters, like the speed at which you want it to kind of interact. The note transition determines how smooth it's going to jump between notes. The lower numbers represent a more robotic type feel. I like the fact that it has the keyboard laid out so I can kind of see and pick which notes I want to come in or out, subtract. I'm getting to see the tuning working in real time here. So these are Pharrell's vocals right here. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. That's the first plugin I would put on the actual audio to kind of achieve that sound. As I have like all of Pharrell's vocals or all of Uzi Vert's vocals in this, in this particular case, feeding my aux track. The same space and elements that you hear and feel from Pharrell is kind of the same space and elements you want to feel and hear from Lil Uzi Vert. So first thing I do, I take a subtractive approach. I like to remove what I don't like first. Um, in this case, I'll listen for S's and anything that's too poignant. I'll remove those S's. I'll use a yes to kind of just make sure we're keeping tabs on anything a little too, you know. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. It may sound a little muddy at first, but I kind of know where those S's are going to get poignant or where they kind of can tend to jump up a lot. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. So that last S on Guts, Neon Guts, 
I just want to make sure I got the the esser kind of engaged. It's not really doing much at, at this particular stage. Sometimes what you'll find as an engineer, as a professional, is we tend to do things that feel comfortable, that just kind of sit in our minds as the comfortable thing to do. It's like an athlete where they have a set of things that they do before they play. They might wear yellow shoestrings or they might tap their heels three times before they go out on the court. It's kind of the same thing with engineers sometimes, with mixers sometimes, where I just want to know the DS is on there. I know it's. I want to know it's doing something very slightly. Sometimes it's not a whole lot. It just makes me feel better. And as I do other things in the chain, it then serves a function, at least in my brain, to kind of even things out. So from there, the RE6, a uh, little light roll off again, you can see on the low end. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. Kind of clears up the bottom a little bit to kind of take away some of that low end muddiness that can tend to translate to nasally muddiness, depends on the, on the voice. And then, you know, just kind of pinch in some frequencies in here just to clear up and give him a little bit more clarity. So a lot of times what you'll see, this is a feel point. This is what I felt right here at this point that sounded good. I am not one of those minds that gets into a whole lot of frequencies and points and numbers. And yeah, in this song I rolled off 60 hertz here and 50 hertz here. And that's kind of not how my mind operates when I use plugins. And I, that's why I like a lot of the visual um, EQs, because I just go in and I just start moving. And if it feels right, I leave it alone. Sometimes I'll throw a plugin on and just engaging the plugin feels right. And then you don't have to do too much movement from a default position. It just depends. This particular EQ, the recording engineer Mike Larson had on that particular aux track, a lot of times I like to honor where they have things to kind of incorporate how they were hearing it and not go too far from what they had. And then we come here, our compression. My goal is not to always make things sound too linear and too compressed. I like a little bit of dynamics. I like to feel a little bit of movement in the vocals and the, in the audio that I'm working with. You're not gonna hear much of a difference as I A, B. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. Little bit of, of compression that you can kind of hear bringing in, you know, the vocal and again. Colorful, and I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. My next plugin, after the compressor, is the SSL E channel. Sometimes those choices are just a function of familiarity. Sometimes you just choose the E channel plugin because that's the console that you came up on. Um, so for me, it's the natural choice. So this is bypass and then I'll engage it. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. That's where I really do a lot of the heavy lifting of the shape of the sound is with that EQ. And you can tell right away the difference of just rolling off so much of that low end. I kind of went a little drastic because I wanted to push out some more of the clarity up top. I'd probably start pulling down wherever the default is. I'll just pull it uh, down. Like I got neon guts and feel like, okay, I might need to work my way up the frequency chain to kind of get to the frequency that I want to roll off more, so. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. And, and I why I probably aura, stopped here, like right in that guts. range, and I, colorful... I know as I hear it, that's what I'm looking for. And I got a colorful aura, like I got... That much low end coming off is what I'm looking for as far as the sound that I need to get in line with the track. More so, for this particular song, that was more of a thought process of where I know Pharrell needs to meet Uzi, because Uzi has such a thin vibe on his voice, and I kind of want them to be in the same general space. And so, this was more a function of trying to make sure that Pharrell gels with Uzi better so it doesn't sound like such a drastic difference. A lot of times what, I, what I'll do around 3K is just cut a little bit, just some of that edginess off of the high mid frequencies of the vocal, you know, and then up in the higher range frequencies, I'll tend to boost a little bit of some of the higher end frequencies just to give it a little sheen on the top. Um, that's usually universal moves. These aren't specific to any one vocal. Uh, you can see this is Pharrell's EQ. I'll slide this over a little bit and I'll bring up Uzi's right here. And as you can see, 
they are exactly the same. You can tell with Pharrell's, we rolled off a little more down here, whereas with Uzi, I didn't roll off as much. And these slight differences make, you know, kind of help blend them together and, and bring them together as far as just trying to make sure that Pharrell and Uzi feel like they're in the same zone, same vibe type of thing. This particular session, when they sent it over, they had the Chris Lord Algae plugin on here. They kind of figured out what kind of bite and what kind of room, and they wanted to do a little push, and all the, the settings that they have on this particular plugin is the sound that they kind of came up with. And I just implement that in what I'm doing. I kind of keep it in there, make sure I'm grooming with that. This is the Chris Lord Algae plugin you're seeing on Pharrell's Ox, and then this is the one on Lil Uzi Vert socks. And if you see, they're exactly the same. And so that just kind of tends to keep both of them in the same space, uh, helps to gel them together as a cohesive unit on the song. If you have two artists on a song, you typically don't want Pharrell to have a whole different type of sound and delays and reverbs, and then Lil Uzi to have something that sounds totally different. You want them to kind of feel like they're in the same space participating on the same song. This is not me being lazy. This is just uh, a part of that thought process of keeping it sounding cohesive. And it just makes it a little more palatable and comfortable for an engineer like me to lock in and say, oh, I need a little more bite or a little more push. I think the CLA plugin is extremely intuitive in the sense of just even the terminologies from you go from chamber to tight, to large, and that describes the size of the EQ. That's the terms that we use as engineers, and, and coming up in this industry, those were the terms I used. I used tight and large and chamber. I didn't use specific numbers and all that kind of stuff. So this is intuitive, and it's a good tool. I got love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslavement? Come with us, make some... The first parameter I, I plugged in represents the low end, the lower frequencies in his voice. It doesn't make a huge, huge difference, but it does have a slight effect. Paper, because you should own what you label. Treble, that's the bite. You can have it either at bite, you can have it at top, you can have it, like, ridiculous. Um, but let's move on to the compression. I got love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslavement? Come with us, make some paper. So you can see, as I move through the different parameters of compression, you can hear the compression jumping in. And then, next one would be the reverb, and you'll hear, even though it's very low, it's a pretty large chamber. I got love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslavement? Come with us, make some paper. Cause you should own what you label. And then the very last one was the delay, and they had it on quarter. And then you can hear the, the slight delay in the back. I got love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslavement? Come with us, make some paper. Cause you should own what you label. A nice toolbox of just some cool little tricks and trinkets that is great to add on there. So the next plugin in the chain is going to be our 76, one of our classic compressors. This particular uh, compressor is doing the heavy lifting as far as this vocal is concerned. You can definitely hear and feel the shape of the compression. It, it really adds to the sound of the compression. I got love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslavement? Come with us, make some paper. Cause you should own what you label. And to the untrained or average ear, that just simply sounds like a volume jump. But it also, it compresses, it brings it in your face. It adds some uh, characteristics to the signal. At that point, once everything jumps up, the compression works on the high-end frequencies a certain way and you hear them. Now I want to come back and attack it with a de um, from a standpoint of just toning down some of those brittle, brittle S's that tend to jump in. It's going to be same frequency range, and then this kind of helps control some of the crazy S's that may jump out and sound a little too harsh or a little too crazy. Love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslavement? In this case, it's working a little. Come with us, make some paper. Little drastically because I didn't want Pharrell to sound too, kind of a, almost sounds like a very thinny, top endy sheeny thing that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And in this particular song, I wanted to kind of steer more away from that. 
I got love for you haters. Ain't you tired of enslaving? Come with us, make some paper. And how that translates to the average artist, a lot of times the artists will say, you, you'll mix a song, and one of the first comments you'll hear as a mixer is, especially from the hip hop, um, pop world or hip hop driven world is, man, I sound too clean. And so a de is a good way to dirty up a vocal because it, it brings a lot of that top end sheen off. It, it kills some of those bright S's, which translates to some people's minds as clarity. But the, the average, like I said, the average rapper producer that's hip hop driven will then say, muddy me up a little bit. I want to sound grimy. I want to sound dirty. That's a very efficient way of accomplishing that. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shoulder. And then this is with it on. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shoulder. And then to sum up the vocal chain, a lot of times I will then come back and throw the R compressor on just to tame things down a little bit, little light compression, a lot of times, especially the compressor I put on the overall end of the chain, you probably won't even hear it working. I, my theory on compression is if you can hear it really well, you're probably compressing a little too much. I got love for you haters. I got love for you haters. It's just really just taming down just the way he jumps in on the eye. It just kind of tames things just a little bit. It's not doing a whole heap of compression. It's not squashing. It's just taming some of those things that may tend to jump out just a touch. For Uzi, the same thing. It's just, we can play a little bit here. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shoulder. And then with it in. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shoulder. So it's all about just keeping that vibe of how thin or how thick each person's vocal is to kind of keep them in the same general space so that they don't sound too far off from each other. A lot of times with overdubs, ad-lib tracks, um, it's about the function of how they fit into the recording. For some records, they are just meant to hang in the back, just be an accent, just sound like some crowd noise, just kind of come in. These particular overdub tracks for Lil Uzi Vert, on the audio, I used the wave tune to just kind of stay in line with what he was doing and the sound that he has. Lord. It kind of gives it that, that little feel. Same key, same note transition uh, numbers, same speed as far as the retune speed. And a lot of times what I'll do is those tracks then would have some type of slight delay, a slight reverb on them to give them a feel, to throw things around. On these particular tracks, I'm using the H delay. I'll move that a little bit to the side. I'm also using the R verb to kind of give it a little space. I'm also using the S1 Imager. And the S1 Imager just kind of helps um, place things in the, in the stereo realm, in the stereo spectrum, just kind of widens things up a little bit, widens up these effects, the reverbs, the delays, to, to, to kind of spread things out and not keep everything in the same space. With ad-libs and, and overdubs, to try to maintain their presence but not drawing away from the main vocal, I think really, to be honest with you, is just a function of volume and levels. And a lot of times, we can tend to get too in our heads in the mix about what we're doing and we don't revert to the more basic things, which is it's just levels and volumes. And so like you hear right here with Uzi, where you have the main vocal. Never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shoulder. Yeah. Up. So even the OYs and the yes and all the little things that are coming in the background, so that they don't overpower the vocal, I think it's just really a function of your levels that you keep them at. In this particular song, I didn't bust the ad-libs into a separate set of auxes. I used the same aux that Uzi's lead is bust to. It's the same aux, aux the ad-libs are bust to. I didn't separate how I EQ them. The auxes, when you bust them to different auxes, that's usually a function of wanting to EQ them differently from the leads. I wanted to keep that feel the exact same. So it's just a tool of efficiency. If you know you're not gonna do any different ad-libs or different EQs, I just use the exact same aux. This aux right here with all these plugins where you have the de the REQ, the R compressor, you have the SSL, you have the CLA, the 76, the de and the compressor again. This aux is encompassing the sound that I wanted to achieve for the leads 
and for the ad libs and the backgrounds. And so I just left them out of the same all. So as I play. Yeah, you never stayed in Kahlua. I push it now on my shooter. Yeah. Flood in my chain and it Gucci. I don't want that girl, she moody. I'm basically saying I'm cooler. Get DR discounts from my cougar. Back in the sixth grade, I got them bad grades. I was in love with my tutor. Yeah. See, musically, Lil Uzi trapping, man. Uh, it happens a couple times in the song where Uzi kind of just does this whole dark thing. He goes in, I'll play a little piece of it so you know what I'm talking about. It is this thing right here. And as you can see, we have our trusty friend. This is like my favorite delay of all time. I love this delay for a whole lot of reasons. A, because it's a delay, it works, it just does what it says. And it's a simple tool. You figure out, do you want a quarter note delay? Do you want a uh, quarter triplet, eighth delay? You know, it's very intuitive, very straightforward. You see your BPMs, you know how much your feedback is gonna be here. Da and the other thing I like about the HD delay too is as you play with it, and you can automate this, as you play with the different parameters and you play your sound, you get all these quirky like effects like. Da 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 so. That's always uh, fun. Like I said, it's a beautiful piece of gear. Another cool thing about this delay unit, which is great, which is always useful, is it has filters. And so you can like do high pass, you can do low pass. And a lot of times with the delayed signal, you want to you can some you want to sometimes affect the frequency of the delayed signal so you can hear it better so it can punch through better da, 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 da. so right there i can roll off da, da, da. and now da. the delayed signal is very thin very high endy. There are times when you can have too much delay in a song where it's just overpowering. There's times when it's just there for a subtle effect to take up space. Sometimes it's just there as a feel thing to take up a little of the background space and a lot of the gaps in a song. And sometimes it's meant to be heard excessively and a lot. Like in this particular section, Uzi wanted it to be very like, you know, overbearing. So he didn't want it, he didn't want it filtered out. And as a background piece, he wanted it as a part of the actual sound where the delay was heavy and just real dominant in that space. I have a very minimalistic approach to EQing and plugins and mixing. I don't just slap a whole bunch of plugins on everything. I take the material for what it is, figure out what's needed. I have a very subtractive approach to how I mix, kind of like when you're cleaning up a room. You, when you're going to clean up a room, the first thing you want to do, you don't want to start, you know, shining off surfaces and spraying cleaner on everything. You want to get rid of the trash first, remove the stuff you don't like. And that's how I approach a mix is I come in and I, I take away the things I don't like first. And then I start putting plugins on here, plugins on there. And it's just trying to use the natural balance of what's there and then using the plugins to just enhance you know, accentuate, bring out certain things, that kind of thing. You figure out what balance and blend work for you, and you just go with it. Mama said, let me see the witch. Boy, you know, light and dark don't mix. Mix it up, boy, bad luck. Sick to my stomach with the neon guts. Higher than Elon Musk. So high stars eat our dust. And I got a colorful aura, like I got neon guts. Dark energy.